Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today's video came as a request from Amia Nico, shout out to Amia, asking what health and fitness apps I use to support my healthy lifestyle. And I figured I would share them because I have about five I'm gonna share with you today that I use on a daily basis that I've used for at least the past year and a half or more. It's like pretty consistent and I think you guys would love to see them. So let's jump into it. So I do kind of feel like apps can be a little overrated. Like we don't need fancy apps, right? To get in really good shape or to be healthy. And a lot of the apps that I've tried, like I love trying new apps, seeing like what's the top charts in the health category on the app store. But a lot of times they're just really fancy and have a lot of features that you wouldn't really use. And we can like get wrapped up in this idea, right? That the app is gonna do the work for us when really like you can do this with an Excel sheet. You don't need to have the apps, but they can help simplify some things. So as far as what I like to use, I just like stuff that simplifies things that I'm already trying to do. I don't like things that complicate things. I remember years ago when I was trying to figure out my nutrition, I downloaded, I can't remember which app it was. I think, I think it was all of them to be honest. I downloaded apps like Try, trying to figure out how to figure out my meal planning and like give me recipes and I felt very overwhelmed by those. I don't know about you guys, but I get very overwhelmed with recipes. I think I've said this to you guys before, but I will not really make a recipe unless it's like five ingredients or less. I just like cannot be bothered. So those apps stressed me out and I don't like using things that stress me out. So these are the ones that are simplest to me. So the top one, I have to say number one that I use is the My Macros app. This is a macro tracking or a food journaling app. I used to use my fitness pal, but this is what I hate about my fitness pal. First of all, it automatically adjusts it gives for no, 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 let me back up, let me back up. First of all, it's not the worst app. It's a very powerful app, but it gives you a calorie recommendation that I would never agree with for petite women because you guys know it's way too low. I've seen I've seen my fitness pal give some of my clients in the petite power program recommendation to eat less than 1200 calories a day. Um, and then the other weird thing and annoying thing it does is it adjusts, it automatically will adjust your calories based on how much you're exercising. And yes, you should account for your exercise, but if you go and run and burn 200 calories and then you suddenly feel like you have 200 calories to eat, you are not gonna make progress that way because it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio like that. The not all the calories you eat are actually metabolized and the calorie burn that you get from working out is also really inaccurate. So you're really just like playing with numbers that aren't really real. It's better to just have the, you know, have your daily goal based on, you know, your exercise. If you're exercising hard that day, you should have higher carbs, of course. If you're not, you can have lower car carbs that day. This is known as carb cycling. I do probably uh, five high days and two moderate days. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't like that my fitness pal does that. So anyways, I love the My Macros app because it's very simple. It's not trying to like tell you to exercise more or oh, you exercise so now you deserve 200 calories. That's just not a healthy mindset. It's very simple to use and it lets you put in goals for your high days, your moderate days, if you're into that. Um, and then if you aren't tracking macros because you don't have to track macros, it's not required to get results. If you're not tracking, it's great to just keep a food journal for a few days. I feel like a broken record saying this, but it is so useful to know the nutritional breakdown of what you eat in a day, like how much fiber you're getting and vitamins and stuff. So both my fitness pal and my macros would actually function in that way. But I just think my macros is cleaner, easier, friendlier, and I can share meals with my friends easier. I don't know. I just prefer it, the user experience more. So I use this for my meal planning. And if I make a recipe, I put my recipes in there. It's really just kind of like what's easiest for me. Okay, next up. Two of the next apps that I use are actually just native if you have an iPhone to your phone. I don't know if Android has like their own version of this, but the first one is the fitness app. And I use this with my Apple Watch. I just like to track my workouts, not for the calorie burn. That's important because you shouldn't exercise just to burn X number of calories. That doesn't, it's just not gonna help you in the long run. I exercise because it makes me feel good. I wanna build muscle, I wanna get stronger. I'm not looking at how many calories I'm burning. However, I do like to see what my heart rate is like. Let me pull this up for a second so I can make some examples. 
If I can see that I maintained a heart rate of about 80% of my max heart rate for the duration of my low intensity steady state, that wouldn't be low intensity really, that's pretty intense. But say I had a higher uh, intensity training session planned and I had a goal of training at about 80% of my max heart rate and sustaining 80% or 70%, then if I track it on my watch, I can go in, look at my last cycling workout and see, okay, my average heart rate was, I don't know, this one says 164 beats per minute um, and see if I maintained that throughout. Um, it has like, it like graphs it on a chart, which I really like. And I'm not aiming for a calorie goal. You can, like I said, I don't recommend it because we tend to get attached to the numbers, but I go for a time goal. So if I'm, if I want to, you know, get 25 minutes of cardio in one day because I sat all day and did nothing, then I'll go for the time goal, not necessarily that um, calorie burn goal. So um, one thing it also helps with this is I can see the active calories and the total calories burned and then use that to kind of mark a baseline for intensity. So what does this mean? Basically, if I do a workout that, say I go cycle for 25 minutes and I burn 175 calories as a petite, it's gonna be lower, than a taller person, we just burn for fewer calories working out. And say I burn 175 through that workout, the next day or maybe like a few days later when I do another workout, I have a mental note of what my baseline should be for the intensity that I want. So if I knew that my heart rate was 170 beats per minute on average, I burned about 180 calories, I wanna kinda aim for that same place again given Provided it wasn't a too, too intense of a workout or too easy of a workout, I kind of want to be, um, for me personally and my goals, I like to be like, for me and my goals, I just like to see that I'm consistently hitting and matching my intensity from day to day so that I'm not like some days, you know, really, really low intensity and not pushing myself. It just helps me like compete with myself. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't care what anybody else's numbers are. Like, I don't care if they are burning tons of calories, eating this, like working out 30 million hours a day. Like, I just want to know, okay, what was my best? Okay, I'm going to match it or beat it in most of my workouts. And of course, whatever goals I have going on. As long as it fits those goals, then it makes me happy. So I use the fitness app to gauge my intensity and monitor it over time. Also, you can see really cool improvements in your heart rate or um, you know, just like how many calories you might burn in a session. Maybe you improve that over time. So yeah, I, that's what I use this for. Okay, next app is one that I made an entire video about already, so I won't go super into detail, but this is also another app that's native to the iPhone, which is the health app it's like the little heart icon on your iphone i use this for like the overview of my health again i i kind of want to know how many steps i'm stepping in the in a day so that i know okay i should probably do a little more cardio since i was so sedentary today or i should do less or if i'm programming for the month that i know it's going to be busy at work and i'm going to have a really low step count that i know okay i want to get x amount of cardio in given i'm going to be sitting a lot or it just helps me gauge like, am I moving enough? The other great thing about this is I like to look at my heart rate variability, my resting heart rate in general. I'll go here for kind of my step count and heart metrics. And I just like knowing what these are. It just helps me gauge, you know, how I'm performing, if I'm improving, how my recovery is. Heart rate variability helps with recovery, understanding your recovery really well. And if you wanna see more in depth on this app, I'll link below that video for you guys. Now I have to add a special app to this list. Some of you guys already know about it. It's the Smalletics app. It's been out since last year and it's workouts every day. No more thinking about what you should do, scrolling endlessly through Instagram. It just tells you, okay, do this warm up do this workout, you're done, you're good to go. It also includes active recovery days and rest days, and it's all total body workouts. So it's great for petite women, it's for petite women, helps boost your metabolism, build strength, and you can do it all at home. All the workouts are basically like the ones on my Instagram, which are lifting weights with dumbbells or any household objects you find. So. I really like this app because first of all, you can include what weights you use for the exercises and then pull them up whenever that exercise appears in the future and see how you did. You can also write notes in the app and it teaches you a lot of exercises that you can do at home if you're not sure how to be working out at home or if you're new to lifting weights or even intermediate and you're trying to go for a body recomposition. This is a great app for just honing in on those goals and not spending a lot of time overthinking it. So like planning your workout for the day, like stressing about it, not being sure what to do. It just, it just takes care of all the thinking for you and gives you a workout for your petite body type 
which are total body workouts and strength training. So I have to say the Fit With Small Addicts app is a fave. You can join at smalladdicts.com slash app. And since you guys are listening, I will say we are doing some pretty exciting updates to this in the next, it's a, it's kind of big update. So I don't know when we're unrolling it, but coming along. So just know you guys are a lot of exciting stuff coming up in the way of that project. But for now it's workouts. And if you feel like you have your nutrition down already, but you just want someone to tell you what to do to work out, that is your girl, that is your app. Okay, the last app that I like to use is for tracking my progress. This is the Renfo app. Now, the Renfo app is a scale. It's a digital Bluetooth scale that helps you look at your body fat percentage. It's an estimation and a couple other things. It kind of sounds fancy. It's really not. It's not like rocket science. It's just a, a smart scale. But I like their app because I can see how I've progressed over the years. I can see trends. I can log in my um, measurements if I'm taking measurements. And I just like using it for tracking my progress over time as far as my weight, body fat percentage, um, and other things. So I use this every day. I like to step on the scale daily if i'm in a concerted goal phase if i'm in a maintenance phase i won't i will only step on the scale maybe like once a week or just to make sure i'm maintaining or less if i'm in a concerted like i'm trying to lower my body fat percentage not trying to lose weight i'm pretty much at my goal weight but just trying to like lower body fat increase muscle i'll do it every day take the average at the end of the week and see the trends from week to week that's the best way to do it so I love this app. And then special mention, this is not really an app. Well, it kind of is an app. Okay, I use photos, obviously, to track my progress. I love progress photos. They're my favorite way of tracking progress for my clients and for myself because a picture, it just says a lot more than a number can. It, I mean, it just does, it just does. So I like to create an album on my phone and I just label it like my photos or whatever, transformation pics or whatever, progress photos I would call them. And I just dump, all the photos in there every time i take photos of myself either just tracking progress whatever i put them in that folder and then when i'm feeling like doing this i go into the layout app which is made by instagram and i'll look at my side by sides from month to month or from year to year and just see like how am i doing what small changes can i celebrate um towards my goals um this is just something i like to do i'm i just love growing and seeing my physique continue to change over time given i'm still on the kind of like body recomp slower change at boat rather than like the quick fix like drop a million pounds and then gain it back like you guys know i'm not about that progress photos are really encouraging for me personally because i can see awesome changes from six months ago that i can't see from day to day or even like week to week so i find that app really useful for just looking at how i've you know, grown, changed in the last six months. And um, also I usually share those photos with you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll use the layout app and then just share, oh, this is, this is a year's difference for me. Like this is what I did this year. So that's what I like to use that app for. So as you can see, you guys, most of these apps are very simple things. There's nothing really, the macros one is the most involved. The rest are very much like not doing the work for me, right? Like I'm gonna go and work out and these apps just help me stay organized. They help me stay efficient. They help me stay on track and motivated. Um, and I just think that the key is to not get overwhelmed with too many apps. I have kind of layered these on over the years and I just automatically know how to integrate them with my day. If you had to choose one to start with and you've never done like dipped your toes in any of this, I think I would start with just looking at your step count. To be honest, if you're really not moving a lot right now, open up your phone, look at what your step count's like, and you know, go for some walks during the day, break up your work day, and just start there. It doesn't have to be like a really intense, like, you know, download this recipe app and like get all insane, like cooking in the kitchen and stuff. Like it doesn't have to be like that. It's very stressful when it becomes overwhelming. So just make sure the apps are serving you and you're not just serving them, you know, like giving them time when they're not helping you. Cause there are a lot of fancy health apps on the app market that are not that good. So I hope this was helpful, you guys. Let me know what apps you use below. I'm really curious, actually really curious. Like, do you use any of the ones I use? Do you use ones I didn't mention? Are there ones you like swear by? Are there ones you absolutely hate that just kind of like confused you for a while and then you deleted? Let me know in the comments below and give this video a like to support my channel if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.